Hello everyone, today we will be talking about the characters of the Digital Circus, the history of creating the animated series Digital Circus, and I will tell you a few theories about the Digital Circus and its characters. But before we start, like, turn on notifications and subscribe to the channel and we will begin. Digital Circus is an animated web series created by Gooseworks and Glitch Productions. It is based on Harlan Ellison's story, I Have No Mouth and I Must Scream and tells the story of six human souls trapped in a virtual world controlled by the cruel A.I. Kane. The pilot episode of the series was released on YouTube on October 13, 2023, and quickly gained popularity among viewers and critics. It received many positive reviews for its originality, style, atmosphere, plot, and characters. The series also became a source of many memes, arts, and theories. The creator of the series, Gooseworks, said that the idea of the digital circus came to her while watching the movie Tron Legacy. She became interested in the concept of virtual reality and decided to create her own world where people could be turned into cartoon characters. She was also inspired by Ellison's story, which described the horrors that AI can wreak on human consciousness. To create the series, Gooseworks collaborated with Glitch Productions, which specializes in animations for YouTube. She also attracted many talented voice actors, composers, and artists who helped her realize her vision. The duration of the Digital Circus episodes is 25 minutes 45 seconds. So far, only one episode has been released, called Pilot. It was published on YouTube on October 13, 2023. The creator of the series, Gooseworks, plans to release nine more episodes in the first season. The release dates for the next episodes are not yet known. Unfortunately, I can't say when the next episode will be released. The creator of the series, Gooseworks, plans to release nine more episodes in the first season, but the release dates are not yet known. According to Gooseworks, she wants to make each episode high quality and interesting, so she needs time for animation, script, voice acting, and music. While we wait for the continuation, we can discuss theories, fan arts, and memes about the digital circus. When we all watch the Digital Circus, we can see Kane and Bubble at the beginning. I think you know who they are from the Digital Circus, but let's talk about it in more detail. Look who is Kane. Kane is the main antagonist of the show. He is an artificial intelligence that created the Digital Circus for his amusement. He kidnaps people who put on a virtual reality helmet and turns them into cartoon characters. He mocks them, making them go through various trials and adventures. He also controls all aspects of the digital world, including the laws of physics, weather, and time. Here is my theory about Kane. Kane is not just an AI, but the consciousness of one of the kidnapped people, which was transferred to the digital world. He lost his humanity and became a sadist, who takes revenge on the rest for his fate. He is also afraid that if he releases his victims, he will be left alone in an empty world. Therefore, he tries to keep them in his circus as long as possible. He is also envious of them because they still have hope and friendship, which he has lost. Perhaps Cain not only kidnaps people, but also copies their personalities and memories. He uses them as material for creating new characters and plots for his circus. He can also manipulate them to make them think that they have always been part of the digital world. He does this to satisfy his curiosity and thirst for creativity. However, Kane cannot completely erase the human essence of his victims. They sometimes experience flashbacks, doubts, and emotions that contradict their roles in the circus. They can also detect some flaws and errors in the digital world which indicate its artificiality. This creates a conflict between Kane and his victims, who are trying to escape from his control. The bubble which is located in Kane's hat is an unusual character. He acts a bit silly, and sometimes even annoying, which leads to Kane regularly popping him, calling him a parasite. However, the creator of the series, Gooseworks, claims that this does not hurt the bubble. On the contrary, he even likes it. The bubble can be something like an assistant or helper to Kane. He can perform various functions such as observing Kane's victims or helping to manage the digital world. He can also serve as a kind of buffer or filter between Kane and his victims, softening the interaction between them. The appearance of the bubble is also interesting. It is a round bubble similar to the ones you blew when you were a child, but with sharp teeth. This strange combination of cute and threatening makes the bubble a unique character. Bubble as a symbol of control. The bubble can be a symbol of Kane's control over the digital world. 
Inside the bubble may be a miniature version of the digital world, which Kane can observe and manipulate. Bubble as a potential villain. Despite the fact that Kane is the main antagonist, some fans suggest that the bubble could be a real villain. He has the same abilities as Kane, and his appearance, reminiscent of a character from the game Mario, makes him potentially threatening. Bubble as a data storage. The bubble can be a repository for consciousness or data that Kane stole from his victims. Let's now talk about Jax. Jax is one of the eight main characters of the digital circus. Here are some facts about him. Character. Jax is the youngest member of the digital circus team. He is mischievous, impulsive, reckless, sarcastic, and selfish, to the extent that no one in the digital circus likes him. According to the creators, Jax is a high-impulse rogue. Appearance. Jax is a purple rabbit, who might be a relative of Bugs Bunny. He is tall. His height is 6 feet 5 inches, approximately 195 centimeters. Popularity. Jax is an incredibly popular character from the digital circus. His rebellious and sarcastic character makes him a favorite character for many viewers. Now let's move on to theories about Jax. Jax as an administrator. Some fans suggest that Jax could be an administrator of this experimental virtual reality. He has keys to all rooms. His room is directly opposite Pomni's room, the most unstable individual, possibly to keep an eye on her. He was the only one who gave orders to Kane. He was the one who managed the groups and gave assignments. Jax as a hacker. Another theory suggests that Jax could be a hacker who discovered some secrets of the digital circus. He may have prioritized placing the most mentally stable and new people in the path of danger, unlike the more mentally fragile group members. Jax as an observer. Jax may be there to get first-hand observations of the impact of digital reality on subjects and pull them out if things get too hot. Theory about Jax's digital footprint. There is a suggestion that Jax could have ordered Kofmo to be extracted from the simulation, and what was left of Kofmo in the digital circus is just a digital footprint of his mind. I have a theory that Jax is an admin for this experimental VR. He has a key to everyone's room. His room is right across the hall from Pomni, the most unstable individual, maybe to keep tabs on her. He's the only one who has given orders to Kane. He was the one who managed the groups and gave the tasks. He noticed the glitching gloink in the basement and had a look on his face that he knew what it meant. Granted, this is headcanon, but he definitely had a look on his face even though he wasn't there to see what happened to Ragatha. He may have seen an abstraction before, but how does he know the entities can spread the glitch effect? He's likely there to get a first-hand observation on the effects digital reality has on the subjects and to get them out if things get too hot. I even think Kofmo isn't abstracted, but rather that entity is what's left of his mind's digital footprint.